Okay, welcome. Today I wanted to talk about some of the symptoms of boarding school survivors. What are some of the symptoms? We often say that, you know, there's a collection of symptoms which exporters have, but what are they? So today I want to talk a little bit. I'm going to read from Nick Duffel's book and I'm also going to share some of the the symptoms that I see working with exporters, what are similar things that I have um, and others have as uh, exporters. So, thank you. So, yeah, I'll just start with a quote from Joy Chavrin uh, from her book, Boarding School Syndrome. So on page two, she talks about, I believe it's page two, she says, boarding school syndrome is not a medical category. However, it is proposed that there is an identifiable cluster of learned behaviours and emotional states that may follow growing up in a boarding school. These men and women had to adapt to growing up in an inflexible system and learn to hide their emotions. So it's coming back to that identifiable cluster of learned behaviours and emotional states. So I just want to explore a little bit. Well, what are they? Um, so... This is from Nick Duffel's book, uh, page 261. So basically it's saying, the symptoms of boarding school survivors are varied and complex. They include difficulties in relationships and parenting, workaholism, inability to relax, isolation, inauthenticity, a sense of failure and becoming a bully, as well as the expected sexual problems. But the principal effect of boarding is a problem with emotion. This is not only a survival tactic, but also consciously encouraged by the traditions of the school. The classic style is one of emotional retention out of a commitment to duty rather than to the self, except in terms of survival strategy, strategic survival, which is unconscious anyway. So, you know, we've got some things there, which he's saying, struggle in relationships, parenting, workaholism, Inability to relax, isolation, inauthenticity, sense of failure, becoming a bully. And also the, the expected sexual problems, but what he's saying is the principal thing is a problem with emotion. And, you know, it's, it's like when we arrive in boarding school, we're immediately taught, oh, you can't show emotion if someone gets angry, they show tears. I think the first couple of days we can get away with that. But suddenly, boom, I've heard often in boarding schools, people sharing that after a week, suddenly, you know, they would have got away with not being punished. But after a week, boom, then, you know, the punishments come in. Um, Nick goes on to say, in Britain, the great Western uh, mental malaise is perhaps most refined, anxiously living in our heads, obsessed with the past, worrying about the future self-obsessed but never really taking a deeply reflective view not given to practice what in the next chapter i call constructive doubt so it's like we're not self-reflective ah what do i feel we're just kind of churning in our minds so um yeah i mean if i share a little bit you know this is on top what i feel uh, that i see which are quite common for symptoms of exporters is addictions, depression, struggle with criticism. So if either a partner or a boss tries to point something out, you know, we take it personally. You know, I certainly, what I tried to do in my past was try to do everything as good as I could and never upset anyone, keep in the, the shadows. That's what I did in school. Like I try to hide as much as possible so I wouldn't be criticised. And I often hear that. Another thing, sleeping problems. We often have sleeping problems, uh, which links into what Nick Duffel says, inability to relax, which goes on to hypervigilance, you know, um, which Peter Levine talks about in his book, Healing Trauma. That's a, a key symptom of um, trauma, is uh, hypervigilance. Other things I've seen are anger, irritability. We can get angry maybe we're very calm at work but with our children or with our partners we can uh, be triggered quite easily we also have a very harsh inner critic 
which linking that into Pete Walker's work in complex PTSD is like that's a core symptom of complex PTSD is a harsh inner critic. Um, and I noticed that with many ex-boarders, they're so hard on themselves. And that's what I did. I mean, I used to, my catchphrase growing up and then in my, you know, my boarding school time was you're a piece of shit, you know, and, and swearing a lot of myself to stop the emotion. Um, and another thing, not everyone has these symptoms. These are just, you know, you might have some, but often people contact me. I have a list of symptoms on my website and people say, I'm, I'm all of those. I've heard that so many times over the years. The next one is struggle with authority, being told what to do. Somehow that links into criticism. When we're told what to do, some people find it means that there's something wrong with me, which I feel and I see that as a core belief. Maybe I'll do another video about that. It's some of our core beliefs is one is I'm not good enough. Nick Duffel talks about that in here. He says that, you know, uh, talks about betrayal. And betrayal is the great unrecognized but cherished blood sports of British boarding life. He says first he gets betrayed by his parents, dumped away in an institution uh, for what are apparently going to be the best years of your life. And then he gets betrayed by the border's double bind, which goes like this. If they love me, why do they send me away? And if it's so important to them and I don't like it, must mean there's something wrong with me. So it's that thing of, yeah, there's, I'm not good enough. There's something wrong with me, that belief deep inside. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and then the final one is eating issues. Now, it might be, you know, more to do with IBS. A lot of people I've worked with over the years have stomach issues you know and could that be linked into we had to eat our food so quickly you know we used to have to sit and eat two meals in 15 minutes and it was you know for us it was eight night I think it was 900 people in a room it wasn't a relaxed environment that Joy Chavrin talks about so yeah those are just some of the symptoms so if you notice you have them and you went to boarding school, it's like, yeah, you know, this is boarding school syndrome. We have that. We might not have necessarily had trauma at uh, boarding school, but for me, you'll see in other videos, just the effect of being sent away to boarding school is a trauma. You know, and I spoke to Gabor Mate a few weeks ago, and I was sharing my story, and he said, well, your trauma was having no one to speak to. And we had no one to speak to. You know, we couldn't share our emotions that we were upset or sad. That, for him, is a trauma. So, um, yeah, I hope that uh, that helps. We've got a couple of podcasts next week interviewing, so uh, they will go live. It's about um, working with gay boarding school survivors. That's uh, the topic. And also talking to a um, clinical psychologist about education what she feels um, there's also a conference where Nick Duffel and Joy Chavrin are going to be talking in London on the 11th I will be there and be lovely to uh, to connect with you if uh, you uh, you know if you are there as well and um, I'll put a link into the description um, if you want to, to book on that but yeah some of the symptoms of boarding school survivors. So it's important to know that if you have these symptoms, it's like you can do something about it. There are ways and means. Psychotherapy, there's um, Nick Duffel's work. You know, I work with um, people helping them to release these, um, these symptoms. There's lots of people, brilliant people out there. Um, so please do, I'll put a link in to the description as well for the boarding school survivors. Uh, therapists as well but bless you all and um yeah i um have a great week okay take care